And it's voiceover body shop because it's Monday night. Monday night. Monday night. Monday night. Monday night. Race Monday. Fan. Be there. Monday. 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 <laughs> Karen Saltis is our guest tonight, and right. she's doing. We're not sure where she's joining us from. From somewhere on planet Earth. She's a mobile voice actor who works from a mobile studio some of the time. We're going to find out a lot about that. Plus, we have some tech stuff. We're going to look at the difference between physical noise and digital noise. Oh, man, I'm glad, because that's something you guys need to know. Absolutely. We'll see you right after we intro the show. Two men, twin sons from different mothers, with a passion for voiceover recording technology and the desire to make recording easy for voice actors everywhere, together, in one place. George Whittem, the home studio engineer to the stars, a Virginia Tech grad with an unmatched knowledge of all the latest gear and technology in voiceover today. Dan Leonard, the home studio master, a voice actor with over 30 years experience in broadcasting and recording, and a no-holds-barred, myth-busting attitude for teaching you how easy it is. Together, finally, to bring you all the latest technology, the superstars of voiceover today, and leading the discussion on how to make the most of your voiceover business. This is VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Ants Land Productions, where you can get a killer demo. Source Elements, who bring you Source Connect, Source Connect Live, and Source Connect Now. VoiceOver Extra, your one-stop site for voiceover resources. Vizzy Demos, your audio demo never looked so good. VO2GoGo.com, announcing Camera Ready You. VoiceOverView.com, your voiceover business made simple. And the VO Dojo, take your voiceover career all the way. And now, live from their super-secret multimedia studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. Yes, and I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver... Body Shop. Or VO... BS. All right, we're here, and... Uh, Lots of cool stuff going on. By the way, starting next week. What happens? This show is going to be solar powered. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. We got we got a 22 kilowatt solar system on the house that is now going to power the studio. And the sun will be bringing you the show until the sun goes down in the middle of winter, in which case we're back on LA you know, DWP grid. But. Yeah, yeah. Well, you get a pretty good amount of sun even in the winter here. It's just probably about half the exposure, right? Right. Maybe roughly. But it should still be enough. Anyway. Is it one giant panel on one of those heliostats that follows the sun? Is it? Oh. Uh, I wish. <laughs> not not that would quite. Be awesome. Not quite. That would be awesome. Yes. Anyway, I'm glad. I'm, that's really cool. It that's is. That's really cool. And it makes more power than you'll need at times. Uh, supposedly. Awesome. Running our air conditioning, which didn't work at all. That's impressive. I know. Anyway, so we're going to have a solar powered studio here. Uh, we have a great guest tonight who is joining us from the road. We're going to find out exactly where. We're keeping it a mystery. We like a mystery it's sometimes. It's probably Peoria or something like that. We will no, find I, out. Well, we will find out. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with Peoria for you people watching in Peoria. I don't know where that is. It's New in York? Illinois. It's in Illinois. Oh. Peoria, Illinois. Do I, the social studies teacher has to teach you all the geography yeah. stuff? Te okay. Definitely. Okay. All right. Anyway, Karen Saltis is going to be with us tonight uh -huh. in a little while. And we've got some tech questions. But right now, it's time for... And now, the voiceover extra, VOBS News, the latest and most comprehensive voiceover industry news, brought to you live. All righty, for August 8th, that's today, the voiceover extra news, fad or trend? Now, in voiceover today, what's a fad and what's a trend? Here's a line from the book, The 22 Immutable Laws of Marketing. A fad is a wave in the ocean. A trend is the tide. This quote and the topic is brought to our attention by Hugh Klitsky, a voiceover audition casting director for a leading bicoastal talent agency and who's also a VO coach. 
And the topic is important. Are you riding a wave, a fad, with your current voiceover style? Or are you coming in with the tide? In a new article on VoiceOver Extra, Hugh playfully examines copy reading styles of recent years. And having directed over 115,000 voiceover auditions, he sees what comes and goes. For instance, the F.U. read, or the I couldn't care less if you buy this diamond sound. Fad or trend? Well, this went out with the tide. Hugh says all the reads went back to warm and reassuring. It seemed that consumers actually like being spoken to with appreciation and a smile. All c- uh, okay, how about the real person or non announcery sound? Fad or trend? That's definitely a trend, Hugh says. Here to stay. Announcers still do get hired, but mostly to convey irony or humor. And the celebrity read? A celebrity getting hired for being a celebrity is a fad, Hugh observes. We hope. Instead, he adds, celebrities are now hired when they can do the voiceover job well. Whether or not they actually need the money is a whole other issue. So think about the copy reading choices you're making tomorrow. Fad or trend? And of course, it only matters that you please the client, but keep an eye on the horizon. Mm. You can see this article and many hundreds more at voiceovertoextra.com, your daily resource for voiceover success. And they're all free! Free, free, free. Free, 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 awesome. free, free. All righty. Any interesting things going on in the tech world? Again, it's kind of a sleepy summer. Um, you know, there's not a whole lot really exciting coming out in the tech. <laughs> we, wait for the, we wait for the fall when all the new products are announced for, for the end of the year, the holiday seasons. AES is in the fall. What so are you going to buy? What are you going to buy? In October. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, from a technical, technological standpoint, in your own life, in your own studio, is there anything that's like working way beyond your expectations or anything that's underperforming that you'd love to replace? Well, you know what I always say when I go into the mall? Yeah. I don't need any of this crap. Right. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> what I, I, you know, I, I need a new shirt, you know, something yeah. along those lines. Yeah. It, there's not a whole lot new under the sun. I am having trouble with my old channel strip that I use which has, oh, I yeah. tell people, don't use a channel strip. I don't use it the way most, most people do. Right. But that's not working. That probably needs updating and replacing uh, for what I use it for. Uh, microphones, I love the mics I have. There's a great, there is one thing that just popped into my head. Bing! It's kind of technology related, but All I was right. listening to one of my favorite podcasts. Uh, it was Radio Lab. Ooh, Isn't oh, Radio great. Lab oh awesome? great show. Great show and on NPR. The, the most current episode, they are talking about something that we're concerned about and we want to talk about on this show at some point. And that's Good. Voco. Oh, oh, Adobe's got this. Adobe thing. Voco? Oh, yeah. They did a whole episode about it because honestly, not only the voice actors are a little freaked out about this, but basically. The technologists are even freaked out about this because basically this software is so good at faking somebody else's voice with just 20 minutes of training. All you have to do is record into Voco, which is a new feature that's going to be built into Adobe Audition. You just record 20 minutes of anything. Do you remember Dragon Naturally speaking? Sure do. Dictation? It sucked. (laughs) Yeah. Well, imagine that on steroids, like the next level, the new dimension of that. Yeah. That system you had to you had to program it, right? You had to read into the system and train it. But you had to read a script that they provided to you. And so you'd read the script and it would learn your voice pattern. With this software, you don't have to read any specific script. You just read anything. You just talk for 20 minutes. The theory is that within 20 minutes, you have pretty much said and made just about every Sound, sound that pattern you, that your voice that can is do. used in the English language. That's the theory. <laughs> so it it learns the speech pattern after about twenty to forty. I'm confused with whether it's twenty or forty. Even in the podcast, they uh, they had a little conflict there. But and then what you do next is load in a script, and you can <laughs> type in like a sentence, and it will read back in your voice the script that's on the screen. Yeah. So you know. The whole idea of face replacing is freaky enough, but also being able to synthesize the voice as well mm. has got people rather concerned. I would imagine it does. I but... mean, the ability to take a, two celebrities and put them into any 
any oh, scenario the, you can possibly just, imagine. Just the copyright and the and the 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 the, 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 N, the NDAs and the yeah. contracts. I, it's a total mess. Well, I mean, so. those in the music world, you know that nowadays you don't hire the London Symphony Orchestra unless you're Spielberg. Mm. Right. You don't hire the London Symphony Orchestra to do a score for your project or your jingle. Right. You buy the London Symphony Orchestra on samples. And you get every instrument in the orchestra sampled beautifully, and it sounds amazing, and then you play it back. This, in my opinion, is what's going to be the future of voiceover. You're going to buy Dan Leonard as a software plugin. Do you get a royalty? Buy, yeah, <laughs> damn straight. You better. You're going you're gonna, to... Engineers are doing this. Recording right. engineers are selling their presets. Yep. They're selling whole sets of presets of their settings on how they set up the compressors. This is the wave of the future. So I think what's going to happen is celebrities probably going to be the first ones. Maybe the B-list celebrities. I don't know. Celebrities that are, are willing to... Sh Heck, they're doing commercials for alcohol now. So mm -hmm. celebrities will do anything. I mean, they're, they clearly are desperate to make money. They're, but <laughs> I think they're going to be selling maps of their voices. Hmm. And so you'll be able to buy... You know, Owen Wilson, or why would you want Owen Wilson? You'll be able to buy. Well, you know, you can get a little help of if you all can of do the that. Voice and, of all of the actors. Why would you think of him? Huh? I don't know. But you'll be able to buy any actor's voice as a, as a voice model or a right. patch and then do your script in that voice. I think that's what's going to happen. I really do. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be over the hill by then. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. I'm uh, not trying to be bringing be, on doom and gloom here, guys. I, I think it's just like in the real world of just in the world of audio, there are still people playing in or in orchestras. There are still orchestras being hired. Just like there will always be voice actors hired to do voice projects. But I think what's going to happen is the low end of the budget, that l really low end work, yeah. that's going to become more and more automated, and that's that's probably the way things are going to go. Well, that means be really good at what you do so you do the high-end stuff. If you watch the news, everything's going to be automated in the next 20 years. Oh, my goodness. The truckers, the 1.2 million truckers in the United States, they're going to be basically replaced. Oh, cripes. Well, by the end of the year, they're going to have trucks driving across the country, self-driving trucks. By the time automated. this all happens, I'm going to be sitting on a beach in Tahiti. No, it ain't going to take that long. Unless you're planning to go to Tahiti this year. <laughs> I, I, I might, and I'll just stay there. It's, it's going to happen. Cancel really my passport. Soon. I can't go home. i got to stay here in Tahiti. Anyway, that's, right. that's some of the tech stuff that's been percolating to the surface lately. Well, uh, that came out of nowhere. Yeah, all well, right. It's, it's, it's in there. All right. got lots <laughs> more coming up on this show. we got a tech thing we got to deal with. Uh, oh, good. We're talking about physical noise, noise versus digital noise. Yes. Something that you and I deal with all the time, and we'll talk about that right after this. Don't go away. What's a Vizzy visual voice demo, and why do you need one? A Vizzy takes your audio-only voice demo and wraps a video around it. The audio track is your voice demo. The video track tells your story and reinforces your brand. And why do you need a Vizzy? Well, what do people see when they're listening to your demo now? Your voice demo may sound terrific, but if your prospect gets distracted, they may not even remember hearing it. By engaging both their senses, sight and sound, your chances of getting noticed and remembered go way up. Besides, when your demo shows up as a video, you're instantly going to stand out from the crowd of voice talents whose demos are nothing but MP3 files that go in one ear and out the other. Your voice demo never looked so good as it will when it's a busy demo. Book your busy visual voice demo today at busydemos.com. Alrighty, you know, if you're looking for the very best, most comprehensive voiceover training, you know where it is? It's at vo2gogo.com, where you're trained personally and individually by David H. Lawrence the 17th to create a successful and profitable voiceover practice. But if you go to vo2gogo.com right now, you're going to be a little bit disappointed. Why? Well, for the first time since 2006, David's raised the monthly subscription fee for his VO2GoGo Pro classes and workouts from $200 a month to $250 a month. And the Pro Plus, which adds three produced VO demos to your training package, went up from $400 to $450. Jeez, what a guy. Thanks, David. Well, look, it's still a bargain for what you get in either Pro or Pro Plus. Well, 
Mr. Wedham and I weren't going to stand for that. We came down hard on Mr. Lawrence and guess we were pretty intimidating because he folded like a cheap copy stand. <laughs> anyway, so because of this, David's agreed to only to give only you, the VOBS viewer, 2006 level pricing, just $200 a month for Pro, $400 a month for Pro Plus. Go to vo2gogo.com forward slash VOBS. And if you choose Pro or Pro Plus, use the coupon code VOBS at checkout. The coupon code to use is VOBS. That'll save you $600 per year over current prices. Of course, you can save that now if you go to Pro Complete, but that's only for your really dedicated talent who want to unlock the entire 36 class course and just go through it all that much faster. Now, this offer is only good for a limited time. This is the last week it's, a, it's out there. So if you've decided you want to move your voiceover to career to the next level, VO2GoGo.com is the comprehensive voiceover training you need. Visit VO2GoGo.com forward slash VOBS and use the coupon code VOBS to save yourself $600. All right. We'll be right back. Every Monday, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. Voiceover Body Shop. I love when they talk BS about you. All right, we're back, fortunately. And uh, it's now time for... Dawview 2017. Yeah, you know, we... we Okay. We wanted to use this for a while. I keep saying, we're going to teach you something on DAWview 2017, and then, you know, stuff happens. You know, it's like, oh, we got a technical bump. Uh, what are we going to... Anyway. We've been solving a lot of our own technical, technical issues. Problem. Right. So now yeah. back to your problems. That's right. So one of the things that we deal with a lot mm -hmm. when we get audio from people is noise, background noise. Yeah. And they're like, there's a humming it, it must be the wiring in the house. Yeah. There's a buzz. Yeah, there's a buzz. And buzz can be almost anything. That's right. Yeah. But there's a difference in the way these things sound. Right. And so we want to show you what we see. You can't see. I mean, if you're in Twisted Wave or Audacity or something like that, you can't see this stuff. Yeah. But on a spectrogram, it's as clear as a bell. That's true. And then, you know, and then we can also listen to it on headphones and we can hear exactly what's going on. It, the spectro spectrogram can be really useful when, when you have a hard time by ear discerning what's what. Exactly. And the spectrogram will show you a visual of what's what. And I think Andrew's got that available to look at. All right. Yes, he does. All right. Okay. So, of course, we want to be in the picture, too. There we go. Right there. Nicely done. I'm going to see if I can. Put... Eh, she's not in there. You can't see her. You can't see her. No, okay. I hit her away. Okay, there cool. She's still there, wherever <laughs> it is, where she is. But anyway, okay, let us uh, let me zoom this out a little bit so you can, uh, come on, come on. There we go. Okay. Here in the spectrogram, you can see right the end there, <laughs> over there. <laughs> you, Isn't you, that fun? Yeah. All right, you can see this a little better this way. Okay. There we go. There. This way. Okay. That way, right there. Okay. There are a couple of different lines here. And boy, what I had to go through to find to show you this. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, that's all right. I'm having a good time. All right. You'll notice that there are different lines here. And this is all, the spectrogram essentially is what, what it's supposed to be is a graphical representation of the varying volumes of different frequencies. And the more, the lighter the color, the, the easier, you know, the, the, the more easy it is to see how loud that particular frequency is. You're all, your eyes are all rolling to the back of your head. Well, no longer, because what we're going to show you here is this line right here that, that I'm highlighting there, that one right here, there, there we go. Uh, what that line is, is something mechanical, probably. Yeah. But let's listen to the end of this and see if you can hear it. Let's turn it on. Well, that would help too. Do you have your audio? Oh, I, there you go. Okay. Try it again. Okay. Yep. It was working before. There we go. A life, this, the story of our lives. It was working before.com. There we go. Nope. I don't have it. Oh, well, anyway. Did this get uh, disjointed? It did not get disjointed. It's plugged in. Uh, Let's go back to the audio here. To home and okay, doctors try it again. who really know you. Where's the Pharmaceutical. 
and specialty referral ah, services. There we go. There we go. Quantum Yay! anticipation. Okay. I know how to troubleshoot stuff. We are here to keep you healthy. Now listen happy, to the end here. Loving life for a lifetime. Mm, I hear it. You hear it? Yeah, I'm gonna crank up the game. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. Now, is that a physical noise or a digital noise? That is a physical noise. That definitely is a physical noise. And there's a couple. How do we know that? Why, well, how do you? When you hear that, what? What's the clue? What's the tip off? Well, because I've heard it a thousand times before. Yep. It's something. It's a fan. It's a vibrational it's a vi- thing. It's a vibrational thing. Now, if we if we look at the in just at the the waveform and mm-hmm. really zoom in on that, mm-hmm. one of the things we can tell generally. They can't really see it so well from you here. You can zoom vertical if you want. I could do that. Yeah, you mean like, it's not doing that. It looks oh, differently oh. than that. Yeah, that's right. going to throw me completely off. <laughs> One of the things we look at when we do this and take the time to do it yeah. is we see a regular, get me in there, Andrew. What we see is a regular pattern of of uh, of a frequency. It's, and, and there you go. Thank you, George. See, it's regular. It's not... That tells me it's mechanical. Yeah. Because a digital noise would be a little bit different. Digital noise more is... More random, more, more jaggedy. Yes, exactly. Like more... It's hard to describe, but it would... Yeah, it definitely looks different on digital noise. Right. But that's, that's one of the ways we can tell that this is indeed a mechanical noise. Now, our ears are trained to hear this. If you hear a, a hum, there's a number of things you can look at. You can look at, let's go back to the spectral view on this. Spectral view. Bing. All right. And, uh, all right. In the spectral view, there we go. See, well, I that do... does work. You just have to do two fingers. That's it. That's a two finger. Two thing. fingers. Two sign. fingers. All right. All right. So one of the things we can see, I mean, there's all sorts of things I can see here. You know, there's some more broadband sort of right, and it's it's it's, it's 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 you know it's it's at one frequency. That also tends to indicate to me that it's probably some mechanical thing. Yeah. Sometimes we'll see these striations that are that that are there. Uh, for instance, if we look right in here, zoom in a little bit there, you you can see that you can see the different levels that are there. Yeah, and while you probably can't see that that well, it's. Uh, it's it's probably something that if you send us the audio, yeah, you or I will look take one look at it and go, that's a digital noise or that's a physical noise. Ninety percent of the time, it's a physical noise. Yeah, it's, digital noises are I think more random, sort of random. Right. They sometimes come off as clicky little click random right. clicks. You'll see it'll be a dropout or, or something like a that. A very high frequency whistle or a whining like a right like that. The low frequency stuff like this almost always is something Physical. vibrating, right. a motor, a hard drive, a fan. And they're often in that, if I zoomed in on the, on the scale on the right so that you could see um, that this noise is centered at somewhere around 120 hertz. Right. And that's another telltale sign it's probably a motor or a fan because they run at electrical or AC current is at 60 hertz. Right. And these things the noise you hear is usually at double that around 120. Right. So um, if you're really in having a hard time eliminating it from the source, let's say it's your neighbor's air conditioner, bathroom, air conditioner <laughs> yeah. or their bathroom fan or something that you just have no control over, you can use noise reduction. You can also use an equalizer to notch out that frequency. It's pretty much exactly at 120 hertz or whatever it is. And you can use an equalizer to notch out that one frequency and right. eliminate it pretty well. Right. Here's another one. The fact is, this person's voice doesn't go below 60. Yeah, not it's, much, nothing below right. 60. So you could literally, you know, what we call a high-pass filter, just yeah. take out the entire thing below this person's voice and just take it out. Is it delete? It, yeah, but it depends on whose computer you're at. Yeah. But now... But you still have this sound that is going right through the middle of their yeah. voice. You can't just delete that because that cuts a hole right. out of the middle. So what we tell people is find the physical source of the noise. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you'll see a boom, 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 sort of a pattern like that. It's like, yeah. And I'll listen. I'll go, oh, that's a ceiling fan. It could be below you. It could be the one in your room. It could be any one of those things. 
Uh, yep. But it's a regular hot dog pattern. <laughs> hot dog pattern. <laughs> that, I, that, that I see. This is something a little bit different. This is definitely a, a mechanical hum of some sort. So anyway. Cool. Digital, no, digital noise, we can tell the difference. So if you've got a noise, now a lot of times people say, there's something wrong. I can't, doesn't sound right to me. And they'll mm-hmm. send it, oh, sounds fine to me. Mm-hmm. There's something in your playback. That's the other thing. It really helps to send it to another party to listen to it on trusted monitoring, trusted yeah. whatever their monitoring is. So that if there's a noise, you know for sure if it's in the recording right, or is it in the playback. Because the monitoring can be part of the problem too. Right. A lot of different variables. I love it when clients are, there's a buzz in it. And you go, no, there isn't. What are you listening on? Yeah. You know, well, s- sometimes somebody will say it sounds really sibilant and then I'll play it back and say, no, it, the sibilant sounds, sounds okay. Fine. But then they're, it turns out they're using headphones that are extremely bright and sibilant sounding. So to you, it sounds sibilant. Right. So you got to really know your monitoring, know, know what you're listening to. Yeah. But if you got a problem, send it to us. And how can they get in touch with us? Throw those up there, Andrew. Uh, he's brilliant. He's amazing. <laughs> and you can reach me at dan at danleonard.com. If you go to my website, homevoiceoverstudio.com, all you got to do is click on the specimen collection cup and say, Dan, there's a problem with this. Click on the cup, send me the audio, and I'll. it'll take me 10 seconds. Oh, there's a mechanical noise. Great. Let's find it. Let's hunt down that noise and physically eliminate it. You do not want to use filters if you don't have to. Got it. All right. And we have a question from Gerard McGuire. Gerard. You want to miss, yeah, we don't want to miss Gerard's question. Yeah. If you have an art, an interface such as a Duet 2, that's an Apogee product. Right. Great product. Is there any point, this is the question of the ages, is there any point in an external preamp such as a Pre-73? Pre-73, <laughs> I just happen to know, is the golden age Pre. It's called the Gap 73. Mm-hmm. It's a Chinese company. They make these very affordable preamps. And because it has 73 in it, mm-hmm. I know that that is an emulation of a Neve 1173, which is a very ven- venerable preamp. People very loved nice. it from many. It's been, it was made in the 60s. It adds some something to the sound. It adds a color. Basically, what it's doing is it's distorting the audio. Right. That's, in essence, what it's doing. You don't want to color. That. Is basically distortion. Right. It's 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 a deviation from what you actually sound like. Right. I still don't believe that that's a good idea. I don't to either. Print I... to your audio. <laughs> the preamp in the Apogee Duet Two is a fantastic preamp, extremely clean, very low noise. That's what you need. It's got lots and lots of gain too. I mean, the the Pre Seventy Three has a huge amount of gain, but you've already got the Apogee Duet, which also has a two. It just it's redundant. Right. I really don't think you should use both. Right. That said, record both, do a blind A B test, send it to a bunch of your buddies, say which one do you think sounds more appealing? Or more to like me. Yes. I mean hearing at the end of the day, if it sounds good, it is good, as I always say. But my gut says no, it's redundant, don't need it. It just adds noise, it adds distortion, go straight into your duet. Having talked to the vice president at Epigee. They've spent hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars developing these digital little IC circuit preamps, yeah. which are just as good as the other ones. And you're not trying to overprocess your signal. You're not trying yeah. to make yourself sound great. You're not just kind of trying. You just want to sound like you. And yeah. that's the idea. So Gerard didn't mention what Mikey's using. That also is a factor. Yeah. Sometimes one mic can sound better with a certain preamp, but. Yeah, exactly what Dan said. In fact, our next guest, I happen to find out, she's using a Sennheiser MK4 USB. USB Can't which wait. Internally, it is an Apogee. Ah. It's, a, it's a Neumann or Sennheiser designed capsule, and it's a Sennheiser mic, but the AD converter inside is Apogee. Right. This is the one Chris Courier was telling exactly. us about when we were at, we're at, at uh, I think it was NAM. It was NAM last year. Yeah, That's so right. Karen has one. All right. Ooh, cool. We're going to hear what that sounds like. So okay. stay tuned. That's going to do it for Tech Stuff tonight. But we got a great interview coming up with Karen Saltis, and we're going to find out where the hell she is. <laughs> We've been waiting all week. Hopefully she knows. Anyway, we'll be right back with her. So stay tuned.
Are you confused about how to set up and maintain a professional quality voiceover studio? No wonder. The information out there is mostly mythology. This is the best microphone to use. You have to have a preamp. You need a soundproof booth. This software is the best. Your audio must be broadcast quality. Consult with someone who knows the truth. Someone who's been there, in the trenches, doing voiceover for over 30 years. Someone with unparalleled experience with voiceover studios, who's worked with hundreds of voice actors and designed hundreds of personal studios. He knows how to teach and cares about your success. In one of the harshest environments known to voiceover, your home. Dan Leonard, the home studio master. Separate myth from fact and get a handle on your personal voiceover studio. Contact the Home Studio Master at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Drop off a specimen of your dry audio for a free analysis. Which camera? This one? That one? That one? This one? And where's the echo coming from? Oh, maybe I should do my job now. Okay. Hey, everybody. This is a little spot for <laughs> the dogs have decided now is the time to play. SourceElements.com. Source-Elements.com. They're the creators of Source Connect, a fantastic tool for connecting your studio with many of the top voiceover and production and post studios around the world. And a lot of the television networks, too, including CBS. I happen to know that on great authority because I was just at a client's house who is a voice for CBS and he said, I got to have Source Connect working because they use it over at, at uh, CBS. About time. It is a serious tool and it's been around for over 10 years. So it's been going through tremendous amounts of revision and improvement and dialing in and it's never been better. Th version 3.9 of Source Connect now has things like Source Stream so that if you're working in a hotel with a horrible firewall a marriott or something like that with source stream it can find its way through the network create a, a working connection round trip with the other studio um, that's something that's new in 3.9 it's also nice in 3.9 that you can choose the latency the amount of buffer on the audio so if you've got a really great internet connection go really low latency and that solves a lot of the latency issues people complain about it's very very flexible software we recommend you guys go give it a try. Go to source-elements.com, get a 15-day free trial, give it a shot, and guess what? You don't need an iLock USB key to use it. Just an iLock account, and that's totally free. Thanks for sponsoring the show, and we'll be right back with Karen Saltis. You're still watching VOBS? <laughs> You're you watching VOBS.TV. I don't know why. It's crazy what they do here. I think I'm going to go somewhere else and have a cheese sandwich. Man, there's one show that I can't miss. It's called V-O-B-S. And a lot of people are like, V-O-B-S? What is that? That is BS about V-O. And I love V-O. How much BS is going to be in this show? There's only one way to find out, baby. And we're back here on VoiceOver Body Shop. We've been waiting in rapt anticipation because we want to find out. Karen Saltis, where are you? <laughs> I'm in Maine. Maine, ah, somewhere along Penobscot Bay or something, or oh, I wish. No, I'm here. <laughs> where, ex where exactly in Maine are you, so we can you know send everybody your way? I'm in Kittery Point. Ah, okay. Is the rain in Spain? No, is the rain in Maine no longer acid rain? I think they cleaned things up up there a lot, didn't they? Uh, if it is, we blame everybody to the west. Yes, it's all their fault because yeah. they started it. That's right. <laughs> it's all the guys in Peoria burning coal and stuff like that. All right. So this, this is fascinating. Now, tell us a little bit about yourself and, uh, and a little bit about your voiceover career and how you got into it. Oh, wow. Well, I tell everybody I paid my dues in radio. Good for uh, you. <laughs> start, started in radio in 79. Um, worked in Maine in small markets and went to Worcester and went to Boston and started to get kind of disillusioned with radio in the 90s and decided to leave. And I always tell people that I decided I was going to be a voiceover, which is kind of like saying I decided to be a golf pro or I decided to be an Oscar winning actress. I mean, it was like I knew nothing. This was pre-internet. It was pre-information. Um, I had to kind of figure it all out myself, but I did. And um, 
Yeah, so I've been full time now since 1994. And what else would you like to know? <laughs> <laughs> well, what have you done? What have I done? Yes. Oh, gosh. Let's see. I, I used to do a lot of store casting for CVS. Then they decided to go sort of in-house with one of those companies that we don't like to talk about. Okay. Um, and let's see. I do a lot of, of audio books. Voldemort to voiceover. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> I do a lot of uh, telecom stuff. I work for a parent company and their clients are, and I don't know if I'm supposed to mention any names, but it's a lot of the major American telecoms. And that's actually, you mentioned my MK4 and that's why I got the MK4 because I'm on retainer and I didn't want to hire somebody to take my place or whatever. I just wanted to be able to give them really great service. So I bought a tablet slash PC and I bought my USB mic and I've got some software that works really well for uh, carving up um, IVR prompts automatically. So when I travel, which is usually twice a year, when I go to Europe, I'll bring that set up with me and I can still do stuff for that client. I can still do auditions and things like that. Okay, so where are you from originally? Massachusetts. Okay. But you don't live there all the time, do you? Um, I live in Maine now, and I'm not traveling as much as I was a few years ago. But I do, for a few years, I was going down to Florida for a couple months in the winter. And I, I got rid of the Voxmobile. That was the 27. By the way, the, the picture on your, uh, on your posting, that was of a very nice motor. Home. Yeah, that was a four. I had to find a picture of a van. And I was like, okay, throw that one in there. Yeah, well, that <laughs> motor home and my motor home were two different things. Okay. Mine, mine was old. And actually, it's, George, it's because of George that I bought that. I can't even remember. Dan was asking if we had worked together. You don't remember that. I was living in Arizona at the time, and I called you up, and I said, I'm thinking about getting like a, a, a an old U-Haul or a box truck or something like that and putting a studio in there, and what do you recommend? And you said, I recommend you get an RV because it's already got air conditioning and heating. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I, I'm I so glad you remember it. that. Yeah. <laughs> It was within days of that. I was now I lived in East Overshoe, Arizona. There was that. I mean, most people didn't even have cell phones in mm. this was this would have been like 2010. Yeah. So I didn't know anything. And all of a sudden I met a neighbor who had just moved in and she said, oh, yes, we travel a lot. And, and I have mobile broadband. And I said, what's that? So it, because that had been my stumbling block, I'd been wanting to travel for a while, but I didn't know how to deal with Internet. And I knew I needed to have good Internet. So once I talked to her, it was like, oh, OK, I know that's available. So now let me figure out the basics of what I'm going to do. So it was a couple of days or a week or so after talking to George, I drove to I don't know, I guess it was the next town over for something. And these towns, there's nothing in them. And I drove by my post office and there was this RV, this motorhome, and and I and I looked at it and it was old and I didn't want to spend a lot of money. I didn't want to buy a new one because I didn't know if my idea was going to work. And so I to make a long story short. I bought it and I was talking to the guy who sold it and I said, well, here's what I want to do with it. I want to take the bed out of the back bedroom and I want to put in a custom made sound booth, which I did. And I said, I want to have a couple solar panels on top so that I can work if I'm not plugged in. And he said, well, I used to have a solar business. Uh. So he helped me do that. Ironically, I never actually really used it. Um, but I, well, I didn't use it for VO stuff cause I always had power, but I did use it, um, to have extra outlets because when you've got a 1992 motorhome, there are not a lot of outlets. I got and, a picture of it. I have, I found yeah. a picture on Google of the studio. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to put a link to this in the show notes for, a, for a, uh, the rundown for Andrew to fly in. Yeah. So what was it that made you hit the road? Well, a divorce. <laughs> oh, okay. That'll that's one of the things. I'm out of here. Boom. You know, I, I went cross country in my van when I was 20. I bicycled cross country when I was 31. Um, I've nice. just always kind of had this gypsy soul. And and I always kind of thought, gee, I, that would be kind of cool to do it. But I just, 
I, I had these obstacles and, and one of them was the broadband and the other one was, well, how do I put a studio in, in something? And then when I found this one, I thought, well, I'll just take the, the bed out of the back bedroom, which meant that I slept in what's called the cab over bed. Ah. So I had, to, I had to climb a ladder every night when I went to sleep. Um, and, you know, you've got to think about things like, well, gee, I've got this, I don't know how, uh, 1000 pound booth. And you can't have it to the left or to the right because it weighs so much. You have to have it centered on the rear axle and had to figure all of that out. And then I, I wanted to be able to access the very back of my motor home because that was my closet. So I had to, I ordered a uh, um, sound booth that had two doors. So I went in one from my gap. Yep. There you go. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's the last then- one, right? The previous gen. That's the, the the original Voxmobile. Yeah. And then behind me as I was sitting was another very narrow door. In fact, there were a couple of guys who had to work on my electrical who barely fit through that door. Mm. Um, and that actually is an auxiliary studio I have in my basement now. If it's Because I, I live in Maine. I don't have air conditioning. So if it's really hot or if there's a lot of noise from the neighborhood, I can go down to my basement and work out of that studio. Nice. Ah. When okay. I see the inside of that studio, I get warm and fuzzy. It's because <laughs> I had a 1973 Eldorado brand yes. camper, 18 foot long, and I had the back of it converted into a control room. Nice. So it looks very familiar when I see that picture. <laughs> I love it. Well, I, it, it sounds like it was, it was quite the do. How long did it take you from when you said, I'm going on the road, till you were able to actually go out there and, and actually get it done? Uh, and, and what were some of the challenges you faced? I think it was about three months. Um, I had to order the, the sound booth and I kind of freaked out when I did that because I measured, I don't know how many times and went over it and over and over it in my head. I would go, I'm one of these people that when I, when I really want to do something, I focus on it. And when you really focus on stuff, you make it happen. And every night, before I went, you know, as I was trying to fall asleep, all these things were running around in my head. How am I going to make this work? Um, uh, you know, how the how is the mobile broadband going to work with Source Connect? Because that was how I was going to connect with people. Right. I was on the road with Source Connect, and it actually worked beautifully. Um, and you know, how am I going to do this? And how am I going to do that? And I think three months later, um, I finally took off. I did a dry, dry run to this campground north of Tucson and um, did a session, a very long session up there. It was probably an hour to an hour and a half of straight narration. And it, it worked really well. Uh, so that was kind of cool. And then um, I went home and I packed up my cats and I hit the road. And I remember I remember driving away from my house, which had a for sale sign on it, thinking, oh, my God, what am I doing? <laughs> what have I done? What was I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> I left this really comfortable studio in a very quiet place, except for the birds in the wind. Um, and here I am on the road and, and, and all of a sudden I realized, oh my God, I live in the desert now where it hardly ever rains. And now I'm heading out in a tin can. And what am I going to do when it starts raining? Mm, And if it rains hard yeah. and you know, my mic is, you know, rain was never really an issue. Oh, good. (laughs) Not not, not in Arizona. Well, no, I mean, I, the first place I went to was North Carolina. Oh, well, it does rain there. I took about a week, I think, to get there. And I had to, I stopped at little campgrounds on the way and and I would plug in and I would take out my MiFi device and I'd get internet and then I'd take care of any work that had to be done. And then I'd hit the road the next day and go on to the next stop. I got an iPad right before I left, which was very, very handy for figuring out my trip and, and where campgrounds were and so on and so yeah. forth. Are you are you are you a member of the Good Sams or any of those like You know, I I was and I never used it and and so after a while, it was like, I didn't, I didn't rejoin, ah. but yeah, you know what I did do? <laughs> um, Moose International is a, a, an organization that you can join and they, they do charity work and so on and so forth. And they have different lodges around the country. And I, I joined them for about $25 because some of their lodges have hookups. Hmm. Oh. Oh. Hookups. Oh. You mean like yes. plug-in power? <laughs> and, yeah, okay. 
Okay. Uh. Here's here's my Moose Lodge impression. Um, interesting. So yeah. So what's life like on the road? I mean, what is it? What are some of the things that you do? Why why do you travel? You just go to all the local museums, meeting all sorts of people. I'm sure there's lots of cool things about being on the road. Well, um, I didn't meet a ton of people. Um, camping out west is very different from camping or RVing in the east. Um, and I haven't done much out west, but I have friends who have, and they said, "Oh, there's a lot of single people. Everybody's very friendly, and this and that." East Coast RVing and camping, it's mostly retired people, mostly couples. Um, the people who do come on the weekends okay. are just there for the weekend and they're not really looking to make new friends. Um, but, you know, I did meet some some really nice people and um, I got to see some interesting places. I was down in St. Augustine for quite a while. Um, one of the things that my motorhome allowed me to do, which was sort of half of the reason why I wanted to do it was because my mother was becoming quite elderly and I knew that she didn't have much time left and I wanted to spend time with her. And I had, I had gone down to her place once with a you know, you know, booth in a box and all my cables and all my equipment and all this other kind of stuff and, and actually rented the condo next to hers. And it just didn't work because of air conditioning and refrigerator noise and this and that and everything else. So it was like, oh my God, what am I gonna do? Because I thought that her passing might take weeks or months and I wanted to be there for her. Uh, well. But when I got the RV, um, I found a sad little park in her town and I rode my bicycle cause I didn't have a tow vehicle or anything. I had three bikes with me. So I rode my bike to her condo, got her car. And every day I would go visit her and um, spend the afternoon with her. And then I would go back to my motor home and I would work and um, do it all again the next day. And I got to spend a lot of time with her before she passed. Wow. That's so worthwhile. It is. Absolutely. So yeah. I've got a great tip because when I went to this sad little park, their Wi-Fi was abysmal. It was horrible. I, I don't even think I could connect at all. And I didn't know what I was going to do. And I asked somebody about it and they said, oh, Kenny knows all about that. So <laughs> I went over to talk to Kenny. Kenny. And, and Kenny said, well, we all have Comcast here in the park for te television. So just get wired up for Comcast and you'll have internet. Because it's already, the park is already wired for it. All they have to do is, is connect you up. And a light bulb went off and it was like, oh, this is great. So I called up Comcast and they said, well, we have a special deal, you know, $40 for the first month or whatever, $30. I didn't even know what it was, but I signed up for a month and I had great fast broadband the whole time I was there. And I was going back and forth between St. Augustine and Naples for a while when my mom lived. And I would just switch my service between the two, which was not quite as not smooth. very seamless <laughs> I, as I would have liked. <laughs> communications company in the digital age. I don't know why it takes an hour to transfer service, but it does. <sighs> and then I would get there and I wouldn't have it. <laughs> Darn. <laughs> well, we're talking with Karen Saltis, who's joining us from somewhere in Maine, where she is on the road in her, in her mobile studio. And, uh, it's fascinating to hear what goes on on the road. So I'm, I'm wondering if you have, a few funny stories of what's happened to you while trying to record or doing a live session on the road. Think about oh. that. Well, I stayed in this one place also in Maine where, um, I guess the only spot they had for me was in this area where the big motor coaches park. And so this behemoth pulled in behind me <laughs> and, and, and for some reason, I mean, so now all I can see is like a wall and for some reason they like to leave them on like the interior stuff, mm -hmm. like fans or air conditioning, air, all that stuff, whatever the generator. Yeah. Well, the generator, a lot of that isn't allowed if, if you can plug in. So it wasn't the generator, but there was a lot of noise and it was like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? So the first time it happened, I grabbed a bottle of red wine <laughs> yeah. and I went over and I said, gee, you know, here's what I do. And, and if you're going to be gone for the day, would you be willing to shut off your whatever it is that's running and making all that noise? And they were very nice. 
and they did. And then they left after a week or whatever it was. I was there for a month and then a new wall came in and I went over and talked to them and he was not quite so friendly. And uh, he said, well, I can't leave the windows open because dust will get in here or dirt or something. It's like, well, this is a campground. <laughs> you know, God forbid. Dust will get in. So, you know, I just, I had to sometimes just deal with that stuff and, 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 oh, okay. Down in St. Augustine, I was a mile away from a small airport and it was a commercial airport. And on certain days, depending on which way the wind blew, the noise was just right over your house. Yeah. Believable. There were helicopters. There was an aerobatic pilot who would practice oh, before man. one of her shows. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, when <laughs> I heard her, as soon as I heard the, I was like, all right, it's going to be half an hour. And I would just stop what I was doing, get up and go for a walk for half an hour and come back because I would just sit there. Another time there was just a lot of park noise um, or, or you know, what I call a very plainy day where there's just lots and lots of plane noise and, and the little putt putt planes that make you crazy because they go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> five minutes. I don't mind F-14s. They're, they're gone. <laughs> <laughs> the little ones make you crazy. And it was so, it was because of the way the wind was blowing and it was so noisy, pretty much the whole two months that I was there that I could only work at night. I just had to wait until evening and then work until I couldn't work anymore and then okay. do it again the next night. I so got to ask you, flexible. have you ever resorted to cutting your next door neighbor's generator spark plug <laughs> wire? <laughs> yeah, just sort of just go out and cut it. No, but I, I've thought about kidnapping dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Because my but uncle did about, that once. I thought about putting sugar in diesel engines. Ooh. We, we, we stayed at a campground with a music at a music festival, and the guys next to us had the loudest damn generator you can possibly imagine. And my oh. uncle cut their freaking spark plug wire, just snipped it. <laughs> and these guys are completely, somebody cut our wire. And then what before we, but there was a lot of jamming going on. So like <laughs> before we knew it, like an hour, a couple hours later, they're sitting around jamming, listening, and the guy's yeah. singing, and then somebody cut my wall, something like that. And we were just like laughing hysterically, but trying not to laugh too hard so they yeah. didn't hear us and suspect us. And like, who, you know, who knows? Right. But <laughs> I been listening to your stories about the airplanes passing. It's like a flashback to my sound mixing days. Yeah. We'd be doing dialogue recording in Venice, California, right under the Santa Monica <sighs> Air on a weekend. It oh, was yeah. the worst. Holding for the plane. <laughs> Yeah, just oh, the worst. I, I remember, you know, the AT-6s in formation flying by your place in Santa Monica. Yeah. I, I could hear them back in Buffalo. Yep, when we were it on was, the show. Doing, like, we were I, doing I knew the what show. kind of a plane it was. <laughs> anyway, our guest tonight is Karen Saltis, and we're talking about recording on the road. If you've got a question for her, throw it in the chat room like some of you have. And I know Jack Daniel, who's at home tonight, he didn't bring beer tonight. Oh, man. Uh, so tonight, we're tonight to, I could have really used to be. Well, we'll have to go out and get some on our own. But Sounds if you've got good. a question for her, throw it in there, and we'll ask her those very questions in just a couple of minutes. So stay tuned. Do not go away. We'll be right back on Voice Over Body Shop. Here's, do you know what your audition to booking ratio is? As in, how many auditions does it take before you book a job? How about your pipeline? Do you know which jobs you've booked? Which ones you've sent to the client for approvals? How about which ones you've invoiced but haven't been paid yet? Do you know how much you booked this month compared to last month or last year at the same time? Yeah, these questions might make your head spin. You might say, I'm a voice actor, an artist. I don't have a head for business, and I don't want to spend a bunch of time trying to figure out how to keep track of auditions, bookings, who hasn't paid me yet? And when was the last time I booked with that guy anyway? That's why we built voiceoverview.com, a simple way to track, manage, and grow your voiceover business. Because after all, it is a business. Voice Overview was built by voice actors for voice actors. Check it out today and start tracking your voiceover business. Voiceoverview.com, your voiceover business made simple. 
Hey, Harlan Hogan says, hi to Karen Saltis. Hi, Karen. Hi, Karen. How you doing? The Harlan Hogan Porta Booth and Proto Porta Booth Plus, they have a very limited time offer on voiceover essentials. You can get one of those. Get one of those. You know, you can save 50 bucks right now when you buy a VO1A voiceover microphone with a MicPort Pro. Talk about the perfect combination for recording at home and on the road and $50 back in your wallet. Now save $50 when you buy the VO1A voiceover microphone plus a mic port pro, the gold standard for a portable USB audio interface to professional microphones for a limited time. But you can also get yourself, if you're going to be on the road, a Porta Booth Plus or a Porta Booth Pro. They're great for that type of situation. So go on over to voiceoveressentials.com. Com. It's right down there. You just got to look over at the bottom of the web page and you'll see Harlan talking into his Porta Booth Pro and, uh, and it works great. So click on that. It'll take you right there. You're going to need one. You're going to want one. So buy it. All righty. We'll be right back with more questions for Karen Saltis right after this. VOBS is still on? Seriously? You're listening to VOBS. Yep, this is VOBS. Proven anybody can have a show these days. All right, we're back with Karen Saltis joining us from Maine. And she is on the road, and lots of people have questions for you, Karen. So you ready for these questions? You betcha. Okay. And I also hear it's some of the, one, one of the largest turnouts in the chat room we've had in a long time. I know. You've got a lot of friends. A lot of people want to hear what it's like to record on the road. And, of course, you're hearing a couple of stories now, but uh, Devox asks. The hard-hitting questions. Yes. He always asks good questions. Can you talk about the cost of all of this enterprise of being on the road and recording? Oh, that's a good question. Um well, the motorhome, I think, was 11000 You know, that was a used one. I can't remember what my booth was. I, I want to say f- uh, four or five. I can't remember. But it doesn't cost any more to custom order a booth than to get one of their stock booths, the company that I went through. Um, and then you need a mobile broadband device. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't. A whole lot of money. The setup I have now is a 1998, I've really moved up in the world, a 1998 road track van, camper van. And then I've got a cargo trailer that I tow behind it with a custom built booth built inside. It's it's uh, actually built in. It's not one that I bought and then put inside. Andrew, do you have that uh, picture? I think we have a, a picture of that. I put the note. Do you have the one Put that other me? link in the show no. notes <laughs> on the rundown. If you find it, Andrew, throw it up. There it is. No, it's, there's another one I sent. I'm not, there's another link in the rundown, Andrew, of the other yeah. one. It says, here is her current setup. So he'll throw that up when he finds it. Okay. okay. Sorry. Go ahead, Karen. Yeah. Well, in that one, I'm trying, gosh, I, I can't remember. I think the, I think the cargo trailer was five or 6,000. Um, I think it was a couple grand to build the booth inside of it. Um, so not, you know, not a whole lot, not too bad. Um, and then the cargo trailer has, oh, maybe half of it is, is the booth. And then the other half is storage up front in a place where I can, you know, put other equipment and things like that. Um, it's, it's a small space. It's a very small space in there. Um, makes my booth at home look rather palatial. Um, (laughs) but, but I, I'm getting a new car this year and I've decided to get one that can tow this because I may not always want to tow it with the van. Yeah. Um, and I love the idea of a friend says, oh, hey, come stay there. Yep, there it there is. It is. <laughs> yeah. Can you stand up in that? <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, okay, okay. cool. Standing headroom. Very, very important. Too bad. If no, you can stand up. I'm yeah. thinking something so small you can't even stand. So no, that's not bad. I can't stretch to the side. Right. But right. I can stand up. Right. Yeah. Um, and I just, I love the idea if somebody says, hey, you know, come visit us in upstate New York for a week. It's like, you betcha. I don't even have to take a week off. I can pull my cargo trailer and still be able to work. And I've got a solar panel on top. And that one I used a lot because I, last couple of years, I've taken that down to Florida. 
And there have been times where, for whatever reason, I had to put my car, one, one particular park, I couldn't have my cargo trailer with my unit just because of the, the size of my space was too small. So they allowed me to put it in where there were like boats and things like that, but there was no place to plug in. So uh, I just, I just used my solar setup. Yeah. Well, that's and fantastic. I, yeah. I highly, highly, highly recommend that for anybody who's looking to travel because yeah. it makes you completely mobile. And I knew that if I ever had um, a real tight deadline and I had to get work done and it was a plainy day in St. Augustine, I could tow my cargo trailer somewhere for the day and it, I could work without relying on electricity. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. But not in upstate New York. The solar thing between... October and October, it's just not going to happen. Yeah. Having sold solar units in Western New York. So, so the solar panel, um, it charges a bank of batteries, I'm assuming, a couple of batteries in there? Just a couple of batteries, yep. And then there's an inverter yep. plugged into that whole thing? Yes. Very cool. So she's running off a 12 volt system, but upgrade, but it, and then steps up to 120. Yeah. I mean, that's is, so awesome. I mean, because yeah. a generator is completely impractical. I mean, all you could right. do is run it for some time to charge the battery right. and then hope it's charged enough, you know, so that's so cool. And yeah. one of the things that it, that is in the works, but try to get an electrician to show up, yeah. is I, I want to have outlets put on the cargo trailer so that um, I can access that power from the van. Because right now, if I don't plug in, the van has very limited power. Yeah. Yeah, that, that can be a problem. Yep. Yeah. I remember the old RV I had, we had a special device in there that isolated the the house power from the RV's battery power. Because the generator in the RV would charge the house battery, but you didn't want that house to discharge the starter battery. No, you know, you, don't. you could see how that would be really bad. Your lights started getting dimmer. Oh, oh well, let me start the engine. <laughs> click, click. Nothing. Oh darn. Yeah. Sounds like an episode of Breaking Bad. <laughs> uh, anyway, Paul Stefano has a question. That's yours. Oh, yeah. How does the MK4 Digital, that's the Sennheiser MK4 Digital you're using now, uh, compare to what you were using before? Oh, gosh. I should know that. I'm embarrassed. Um, I just got this a couple months ago. I've taken it on two trips. Yeah. And I, I did work, you know, I pull the bed clothes over me and, and yeah. record that way. I'm doing um, phone prompts when right. I use them and I should compare it. I should have compared it to what I do here. And I have not done that. This is only my travel mic. By the way, I do have a Harlan Hogan mic also. And uh -huh. I've got, um, I've got a TLM 103 and that's my go-to mic. That's the one I use most of the time. Oh, wow. I'd that's be really, really curious to hear how the MK4 and the 103 compare. Like how similar they are, you right. know, that kind of thing. That'd be really interesting I'm to gonna, see. I'm just going to have to get around to doing that because I know I've got the files that I just recorded uh, six weeks ago when I was on vacation. Yeah, I mean, I if just, it's for I, telephony, you don't really hear the finer points mm. of the mic's re nah. re response once it's squished into that 8-bit exactly. audio. And that's, that's why I haven't even bothered to do the comparison because yeah. they don't, care they don't notice i mean they want it to sound good but you don't yeah you don't yeah. hear those fine yeah. and you don't miss that it doesn't have a headphone jack because you don't monitor yourself when you're recording right yeah okay. right. right she might be listening in a remote session well we'd like to hear a comparison when you get a chance record a comparison with all three mics and send it to us oh yeah so we can we can we can hear for ourselves and then make a recommendation Although yeah, if you've okay. got a 103, you've you're you know and and all the other stuff, it sounds like you got all the right stuff. Pretty well, Kai, your bite base is covered. Yeah. You know, when I started doing this, when I when I was making money after I paid my bills, I'd buy better equipment and better equipment. Isn't that what we always say? Do the job to get the equipment. Right. You know, start with stuff you can afford, and upgrade as the as the work can justify. Right. Exactly. And, and these days we. Even though we have to pay for a website, but we don't have to pay for, gosh, remember, cassettes, cassette case, <laughs> cassette labels, postage, mailers, and then it was CDs and their labels and their postage and their mailers. And No longer. Yeah, it was like three bucks every time you send out a demo. Now you can send out MP3s and it doesn't cost you anything. This is true. Uh, Maxine Dunn has a question. She says, thank you so much for this wonderful interview. 
that sound like her? Yes, it okay. does. Okay. Tell us about selling the Voxmobile and purchasing Son of Voxmobile. What was that like? <laughs> well, um, I'm laughing really hard because I ended up selling it to a man who was off his medication. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. And so that that was an interesting <laughs> There's a story about everything. Yeah, of course. When you're on the road, yeah. you get stories. His his son tried to bribe me not to sell it to him. <laughs> um, and But, you know, this guy was so excited, and he wanted to take it to bluegrass festivals and record people and, you know, stuff like that. And I, it was like, how could I how can I turn this guy down? He, he had the money. He wanted to buy it. So I, I sold it to him. And then um, not long after that, um, I was driving with a friend in the next town over and we saw it for sale. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and then I ran into him. Oh, I don't know, about a year ago. And he said, well, yeah, I sold it. He said it was a little much for me to handle. And he said, I made a hundred dollars on the deal. Well, there you go. Didn't that feel I, good? I didn't feel too bad. <laughs> um, and I, the road track, the road track that I have, I just, I found it on Craigslist. And, um, again, it was old because, um, I have not been to an RV show. And if I do, I'm probably not going to bring a credit card or a check. <laughs> that, that could be dangerous. Too risky. But, um, yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm, and it's funny. I don't, you must've read my blog because you said something about intrepid and that's <laughs> it's kind of how I feel sometimes. It's like, I just keep plowing ahead. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, intrepid's a word I would just, it's just like, she's intrepid. She's all over the place. Yeah. You know? It, it makes me miss the, the studio I had in that RV. But that thing mm. was a 73. Mm. And the idea of driving it from Pennsylvania to California yeah. at first sounded fun. And then I realized <laughs> if that thing breaks down in the middle of BFE yeah. with mm. all of my belongings in it, that's going to be not so fun. Oh, yes. I broke down twice in one day. Uh. <laughs> Three times on my way from Florida back to Maine, um, and twice in one day. Man, so, yeah, that's what happens when you buy an older vehicle. Yep. Um, but I had everything with me, and it's like I just had to say to these people, "Don't let my cats out. Just keep keep the doors shut. Don't let the cats out when you're working on my." Well, vehicle. if you're ever driving through Camden, Maine, see if you see a '73 Eldorado camper with <laughs> aluminum siding, because I believe it is parked at my friend's house in Maine. And being used really? as a guest room. I could oh, be wrong about that. Okay. <laughs> All right. What's what's it like traveling with the cats? Well, um, I don't mind it. They do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In fact, I did not go to Florida this year for several reasons, one of which my back was out and I couldn't drive all that all that way. And um one of my cats starts getting nervous when the snow starts to fall and yeah. she's started over grooming. <laughs> getting very oh, no. upset. Um, I have drugs for them now, but I, I have to figure out the dosages because the last time I gave them the drugs, they were sort of staggering all over the van. Um, you, you have to cover most surfaces with plastic right. when you first take off because um, cats do not do well with motion. Nope. No. And now I have three cats, so um, yeah. That's going to be very interesting. That could be a video log in itself. Really? Log on just that one thing. And we want to see yeah. it. Yeah. Tim Handysides <laughs> from Montreal, Canada. Uh, did you ever, and the word she uses here is boondock with your RV, which is uh, as, as in not go to a campground. Right. I'm trying to remember. I guess I kind of did at friends' houses. Sure. You know, I didn't. I didn't dry camp, you know, other places, but yeah, friends would say, oh, come and park in our driveway, not realizing that their steep pitched driveway wasn't. <laughs> chocks, really wheel well. chocks. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I did that. And I had uh, like a 250 foot ethernet cable so that I could plug into somebody's um, you know, modem if I needed to. Oh, smart. Yeah. Did you have oh, it on a cable me. reel that you could roll it out? And roll it I should have. I should have. I, you know, I'm telling you, there were many nights that I'm trying to go to sleep and I'm thinking, okay, how am I going to deal with this? How am I going to deal with that? And uh, so, um, and then I actually configured a friend's modem so that I could do it wirelessly. 
So that was you are official. You are officially a, a voiceover studio hacker. Yeah, it's official. <laughs> All right, Devox has another great question here. What unexpected obstacles did you run into when building and setting up the you know a mobile studio like that? Um, the first in the Vox Mobile, I don't remember any obstacles so much. Um. I will, I will say that it was, it was, it was, in the, it was in the back bedroom and it was flush against um, the sort of doorway to the galley. And yeah, I wanted to make sure that if I stopped suddenly, it wouldn't tip back. That would not, would, would not have been good. And so the guy I bought it from came up with this great idea where he had like a, a metal clothes rack type thing and he secured it to each wall and then he secured it to the actual booth itself. So even if I had to slam on my brakes, that thing wasn't going to move. Smart. Uh, with, with the new booth, uh, a friend of mine who's, who built a booth in his house directed um, this other guy uh, who was a friend of his, a childhood friend of his, to build this booth. And the first winter that I took it down to Florida, I said to my friend, hmm... I'm hearing more noise than I should be. And I'm doing everything that I can to mitigate that. And I'm still hearing it and I don't understand. And I stopped in DC where he lives on the way home. And we discovered that the guy had missed the whole top of like the door frame as far as Oops. filling it. With <laughs> Bad details. Yeah. That's, that's been taken care of now. <laughs> so that, that was unexpected. Yeah. The details. Yep. Uh, even they, a, even a hole like the size, you know, a perimeter around your your door that's like an eighth of an inch wide. If it goes all around the door, it's like a hole like four inches yeah. big. You know. Yep. Yeah. Very important. Yep. It's it's tough. Yeah. Um, oh, and one thing that I wanted to mention when I first took off, um, I I had a laptop. It was backup. My main computer was a tower. Uh huh. And now I've got this little, gosh, I mean, it's like this tiny little laptop and that's my main computer and it's much got quieter enough, and enough processing and, and it's quiet. I can actually leave it in the studio if I needed to. I don't cause every once in a while there's a little teeny bit of fan noise. Yeah. And well, I generally don't, I've got long cables that I use to connect to my monitor um, but that's really different. And that's that, you know, in the old days, if I needed to upload a bunch of files and I didn't have good internet or I didn't want to pay because I was on my mobile broadband and, you know, you, up, you know, you get charged by the uh, megabyte or gigabyte, um, I would have to transfer everything over to an external drive and then take my laptop and go to a coffee shop and upload files and just, Oh yeah. Them. Yeah. What a pain in the butt. That's a pain in the butt. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, there is the new Microsoft Surfaces, which is sort of a tablet laptop hybrid. And I've they're got, totally yeah, I've got the, fanless, 100% total. silent. Oh, is it? I've got, well, my, my travel, my little travel computer is a tablet slash PC. It's the Lenovo Yoga. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but it has a pretty, fan, right? I don't know. I mean, I, again, I only use it when I travel and it's yeah. for, uh, IVR stuff. So yeah. Yeah. All right. Speaking of fans, uh, Liz Harris asks, Oh, nice transition. Thank you very much. How do you ventilate the cargo trailer, especially in the summer? I mean, it's hot enough. It's gotta be brutal. I, I mean, really, is, do you have a ventilation system in it? I don't have a ventilation system. I, I had them when I ordered it, I had them put a couple of vents on the top and I usually generally leave those open Yeah, and park in the shade. <laughs> yeah, that helps. Okay. <laughs> Great. <laughs> well, it sounds like you're having a wonderful time on the road. Any any where any places you're yeah. planning on going to next? Where are you headed? Um, well, North Carolina, a friend of mine is going to be moving to the shore, the North Carolina shore, so I'm probably going to go down there and spend some time with her, maybe a month or two. Um, I I'm one of these outdoors people. I love snow and snowshoeing and cross country skiing. And I've got a fat bike and all this stuff, but I hate mud season, which is March and April. So I usually try to skedaddle during those two months. So. Yeah. 
the North Carolina shore in an RV during hurricane season. So you must be you, a... You, you tie it down exactly. really tight. <laughs> so you, that would make you a mud bird as opposed to a snowbird. Yeah. 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 <laughs> there must be some or, ornithological de description of that. Right. Anyway. <laughs> Karen, it has been a pleasure having you with us. And uh, when you're here in the greater L.A. area with, with all of your apparatus, you can park in our driveway. Yay! <laughs> and plug into Dan's solar panel. That's right. Yay! <laughs> all right. It's been great having you on. If, uh, if anybody wants to get a hold of you, uh, you know, whether they want to hire you or just want to, want to have, I'm sure you want to have pen pals on the road. How can someone get a hold of you? Well, you can, you can uh, contact me, uh, just look at my website, karensaltis.com. Uh, my email address is ksaltis at me, M-E, dot com. And I do get a lot of phone calls and a lot of emails from people who want information on how to hit the road. Sounds great. Dan's computer went to sleep and or died. So he <laughs> lost your picture right at yeah. the end of the interview. Yes. But, hey, what are you going to do? That's right. Well, <laughs> thanks so much for being with us. And uh, we'll see you when we see you. Thanks. This is a blast. Thank you, gentlemen. All right. Well, Karen Saltis joining so us from Maine. She could do it. All right. Well, fun. all right. Well, we're going to be right back to wrap things up here on VoiceOver Body Shop in just a moment. So do not go away. What's a Vizzy visual voice demo, and why do you need one? A Vizzy takes your audio-only voice demo and wraps a video around it. The audio track is your voice demo. The video track tells your story and reinforces your brand. And why do you need a Vizzy? Well, what do people see when they're listening to your demo now? Your voice demo may sound terrific, but if your prospect gets distracted, they may not even remember hearing it. By engaging both their senses, sight and sound, your chances of getting noticed and remembered go way up. Besides, when your demo shows up as a video, you're instantly going to stand out from the crowd of voice talents whose demos are nothing but MP3 files that go in one ear and out the other. Your voice demo never looked so good as it will when it's a busy demo. Book your busy visual voice demo today at busydemos.com. Okay, you know, wherever you are in your voiceover career, from I don't know to working pro, there's always that next question that needs answering about where you're stuck or what to do next, about tech or technique. Well, come get your next question answered this Wednesday at the VO Dojo's monthly free live voiceover Q&A webinar, Ask the Sensei. Sensei, actually. And this isn't actually the spot that was supposed to be there. Oh, what are you going to do? Oh, what are you going to do? You want to read it off here instead? I will. You know, right. it's... Uh, you know, it's not just a class or another workshop. It's an integrated curriculum that's designed to guide, support, connect, and accelerate you in every step of the way, from I don't know to working pro. It's building your voiceover career from the inside out, removing internal blocks, building confidence, aligning yourself with the power of your voice. All righty. Well, it's getting you out of your closet and working with other equally committed voiceover pros on both sides of the glass. It's connecting you with the decision makers who you want to be working with to take your voiceover career all the way. <laughs> anyway, now, if you're just starting, the VO Dojo is currently enrolling its next You Should Do Voiceover Weekend Intensive in L.A. this September. Now, if you're already on your way and you're ready to get into full training to get the most focused results, you can apply for the upcoming fall season of the Mastery Mystery to Mastery program. Mystery to Mastery. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're a working pro, the nth degree program will weekly is, is, and weekly working pro workouts will refocus, refresh, and revitalize you. And the VO Dojo Pro Fight Club will connect you with the top decision makers in the biz. One on a couple of those. Mm -hmm. But you, you can't talk about it. No, it's the fight club. It's a fight club. Anyway, to find out more, go to the V O Dojo D O J O dot com and sign up for a free fifteen minute voiceover once over call. That's www dot the V O Dojo dot com. And we'll be right back. Right, I think we are back. Oh, we are back. We are back. That's we are why back. I turned on the echo machine. Okay. 
just to make sure that we, everybody knew where we were. Well, that was exciting. I was, was I was looking forward to that conversation all week because I'm like, one, where is she? She's in Maine. Impressive, in, you know, impressive stick to and wanting to solve a lot of problems. Yep. And brave. Yeah, well, you know, yeah. To, 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 to do that. To pick so, yourself up and just go. And not only that, but just to be a solo person, solo woman yep. out on the road. Yep. I mean, it's, you know, it's pretty impressive. Yeah, but Nicely done. Driving along in her little fortress. Yeah. Sort of, th- so to speak. Yeah. Anyway, next week on our show, uh-huh. somebody equally as important, somebody everybody should know, one of the best agents out there. And he's not in Hollywood. He's in Atlanta, Georgia. Jeffrey Umberger will be with here. Uh, nice. He is a voiceover agent in, in Atlanta. And uh, we talked to him a lot at, at VO Atlanta mm-hmm. and looking forward to talking to him again. Then on August 21st, I am so excited about this, Phil Proctor. Those of you from the, who grew up, you know, were, grew up in the, in the 60s and then remember being in high school in the 70s, well, remember Phil found Proctor. found dusty cassettes and records of your oh, dad's. Oh, def- definitely on vinyl, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, from Fire Sign. Of, of audio sketchery. Let's put it that way. I will, I'm going to put that one down. Audio sketchery. sketchery. Okay. Uh, just, uh, they ad-libbed an awful lot of stuff. They had some some really cool stuff. Maybe some of you are familiar with Nick Danger. He walks again by night. <laughs> one of my favorites. <laughs> Can you tell this man is excited? I, I really am. And is he going to be here? He will be studio? right here in the studio. He will be coming over the hill from Beverly Hills. Awesome. And depositing himself here in our Future to be solar powered studio. That's so really even cool. He will be impressed. That is really cool. Who are our donors of the week? Well, I'm going through and looking at the list here. Um, the last few that have come in in the last week since our prior show, we had one come in from, you guessed it, Eric Aragoni. Eric, Thanks. we love you, man. Eric. Tracy H. Reynolds. She, or he's actually been a pretty re- regular donor lately. Thank you. And Cam Cornelius. Those are the latest. Yeah, voiceover guy. That's right. Cam out there in Memphis, Tennessee. Show logs. You can ask, access the show logs, of course, right here on our page. They're right up there somewhere. Just click on show logs. And we usually they usually accompany the uh, the YouTube video that we will, of course, display this yes, evening. They do, thanks to Jack. Right. The so, podcast. Yes, it's on Stitcher. It's on iTunes. It's everywhere podcasts are distributed. You can find us. And if you're listening to the show on podcast and you want to actually see the show for a change, VOBS.TV, it's on Monday nights live at 6 p.m. Pacific time. You can watch it anytime on YouTube. But if you join us live at 6 p.m. Pacific time, you can be in the chat room, just like all of our guests and friends that were in there asking questions tonight. Right. Or... If you happen to be in the greater Los Angeles area, you can actually be here. Right in our studio. There is room for you. With, with, right next with, to with, Marcy with, and the dogs. With, with, with Ari and Tinky down there on the floor. <laughs> you get to pet dogs, eat snacks, <laughs> and just have a wonderful time with us. So uh, if you want to be on, if you want to be here in our studio, just write to us at theguys at vobs.tv. And that will, you know, let us know when you want to be here so we know we'll be here. Uh, we're not on every Monday night. We it seems like it, but we do take an occasional occasional Monday Mondays night. off. But uh, you know, if there's a night you're going to be here, we want to see you because we love meeting our fans. Uh, let's see. We need to thank our sponsors, of course. Uh, Visi Video Demos, Harlan Hogan's Voiceover Essentials, Voiceover Extra, and Source Elements, uh, Vio to Go Go, and the Rehearsal App, the Vio Dojo, and um, Voice Overview, Voice Overview. Yeah. Joe Davis and our friends over there. And voice actor websites, are they're going to start telling us about that as well. So, anyway. Well, that's going to do it for us tonight. We'd like to thank, of course, Marcy for Thanks, Marcy. letting us be out here in the garage. Our producer, Catherine Curridan, for finding us great guests like Karen Saltis. Thank you. That was interesting and fun. Yeah. Uh, Jack Daniel was in the chat room tonight. He did a fabulous job getting all mm-hmm. that stuff to us. And, of course, our amazing floor producer who just... Totally has his act together. Hold your hand over your heart for yes. Andrew, Andrew Bushwitz. Bushwitz. All righty. And Jack DeGolia for the show notes. And, of course, Lee Penny for... Being Lee Penny. Of course. Lee, where are you? We miss you, man. Yeah. All right. Well, that's going to do it for us this week. Again, 
Jeff Umberger next week, same time, same bat channel. I'm Dan Leonard. I'm Body Shop. Or VO BS. Have a great week, everybody. Good night. Bye. Yep, this is VOBS. Proven anybody can have a show these days.